Now that we have interactive widgets, there's a lot of powerful tools you can put right on your home screen. I'm gonna give you 42 different apps that all have incredible widgets broken down into nine categories like weather, news and travel, home screen design, productivity, smart home, money, and more. Some of the apps are built into your iPhone. A lot of them are third parties. Some have varying subscriptions and free models. I'll try to point them out where I can. And links to all 42 of the apps are down in the video description. All right, our first category is weather. By the way, if you like the wallpaper, link in the video description. I partnered with a friend of mine who does drone photography. Of course, already built into your iPhone is the weather app. And in iOS 17, we actually got new square widgets like these that show the sunset time and current conditions. So that's the stock weather app. But you can also use Carrot Weather. Carrot Weather has an incredible app. You can actually turn up the snark level for the forecast, but Carrot has a lot of amazing widgets and all different sizes. You can do the square style widget, medium size, horizontal, even a very large widget. And I like these representations of the time and temperatures throughout the day. And you can even do a split view hourly on the left and then the daily forecast on the right. You also get rain and precipitation maps with the Carrot Weather app. Some of those widgets do require a subscription for Carrot, but another weather app option is called Rain Viewer. I really love the design of this widget. It has the radar precipitation on the right, temperature and conditions on the left. I'm not crazy about the app itself and there are ads you would have to pay to get rid of those. But if that radar map is important to you with the current conditions, really love their widget. They also have small size widgets with current conditions and forecast, really nicely designed. And you can even get really large precipitation maps with current conditions as well. Now, if you wanna go for some really bold design, you can go for the not boring weather widgets. Very strong, stark fonts and design. You'd have to design your home screen around these, I think, but they do look pretty cool. And not boring also makes several other apps, things like calculator, timers, and even a habit tracker, all in that same kind of design. So if you like this aesthetic, you can design an entire home screen like that. The not boring apps do require a subscription, but I mean, pretty cool animations too. All right, next up is news and travel. First off, I use TripIt to track all my future travels. I put hotel, flight info, everything there, and TripIt has a great widget you can put right here on the home screen. It has my next trip right here, and because we have interactive widgets now, I can actually tap the down arrow and see the plans for this trip without ever leaving the home screen. I can see all my flight info, hotel, all in a nicely designed widget. When it comes to tracking flights and all your plane and gate information, Flighty is simply the best app, and Flighty has two widgets, a small square one that shows your total distance ever traveled, how many times you've been around the world, apparently three and a half times around the earth for me, and shows you how many days until your next flight and some information there. If you travel a lot for work or leisure, TripIt and Flighty are two must haves. Also news in this category, the Apple News app actually has some great widgets. It's included in a lot of the Apple One subscription bundles. You can choose to show one of the following topics in the widget, one of those suggestions for you, and it also comes in multiple sizes. Likewise, Flipboard is a cool news app. I really tried to get this widget to work before I filmed, so maybe I shouldn't recommend this, but Flipboard is a fun app. I remember Flipboard when it originally came out to connect all your social media, but if you can get it working, the Flipboard widget's pretty cool too. Next up is music and podcasts. Apple Music and Spotify both have widgets you can put on your home screen, but only Apple Music has a play button that you can actually press right here on the home screen to start your music. Spotify, there's no play button. You have to tap the widget to jump into the app. Oh look, there's primary technology. That's my new technology podcast. You should definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel, link down below, or listen to the audio in your podcast app of choice. Of course, tapping either of these widgets jumps you right into the app, going directly to that song or album. And it's nice the widget will actually change color to match whatever song or album you're listening to. After those music apps, there's several apps for podcasts you can listen to. The built-in Apple Podcast app is actually great. It has the play buttons right here on the widgets. So if you want to start listening to a podcast, you can just press play right here. You can have the square, medium, or large widgets. Overcast, also very popular podcast apps. You can play and pause right there. Pocket Cast, another great app, also interactive. Press play right here, and it'll start playing whatever episode you see on your home screen. Also works with square and medium-sized widgets. And while this might not be music or podcasts, I thought a good white noise app would be useful, and this is the dark noise widget, which is also interactive. I can press the rain sounds, and the rain sounds start playing right away. I can switch sounds right here from the widget. And just a tip for most widgets, if you tap and hold on it, you can select Edit Widget, and there's probably a few options in here. Here in the dark noise widget, I can choose multiple sounds that I want to customize, and then these will appear right on the front page of the widget. All right, now let's go to home screen design. Lots of apps for this. The first one you definitely need to pick up is Widgetsmith. With Widgetsmith, you can add photos, star fields, lots of different options for creating your own custom widgets, including timers, solar information, day and date, weather forecasts, tides, pollen, activity, and a bunch more. Once you have multiple widgets of the same size, tap and hold and then edit widget, 
and you can switch between your different options. I really like using Widgetsmith to put a photo right there on my home screen. And while this might not be home screen design, the battery widget, which is built into the iPhone, great way to, at a glance, have your battery percentages there. This way you don't have to have it in the battery icon in the status bar. Third in home screen design is Launcher. With Launcher, you can create a wide array of different size widgets, even live activities and lock screen widgets. You can add individual apps, contacts, music, websites, and more, even shortcuts, and create your own widgets that launch different apps or shortcuts, whatever you would like. Here I just placed three app shortcuts, Home, Files, and the Journal app, and I can just tap it and it jumps right into that app. Another pretty cool app for designing your home screen is called Color Widgets. You do have to subscribe to get a lot more customization options, but even the free version, you get lots of time, date, and even calendar widgets. There's lots of photos, even lock screen widgets as a part of this app. Lots of different fonts and styles you can choose from. So if you just want a different looking clock on your home screen, Color Widgets is a great way to go. You'll also notice I have a blank space here on the home screen. That's done by the Clear Spaces app. For some reason, Apple still doesn't let you place things on the home screen where you would like. It'll always snap it to the left and up. But with Clear Spaces, you can create these clear widgets. You do have to create one per wallpaper that you use. In order to do that, you tap and hold on your home screen, go all the way to the right so you get a blank home screen. You take a screenshot, you go into the Clear Spaces app, and then you add a new Clear Space wallpaper here. You choose that last screenshot you took, and then press the check mark, and that's the image that Clear Spaces will use to update this widget. And then you tap and hold on it. You do have to edit widget, tell it what position of the screen this widget is in because it doesn't know that itself. And once you choose the right position, then it will match your wallpaper and you have a clear space. This next app I recently found and absolutely love it. It's called Countdown. There's built-in countdowns like for the day, month, and even the year. You can see the percentage of the year done so far. And you can also add custom events like podcast movement that I'm going to in 69 days. And you can even customize the look of the widgets, some colors and font options. And now you can have it right here on your home screen telling you how close you are. At 250 today, the day is 61% over. So you have the small size widget and medium size with the event name, how many days are left. And you can change the style too to have these kind of square blocks that'll fill in. You do have to upgrade for some of those options like this, but a really cool visual countdown. All right, let's go to productivity. Of course, number one is Fantastical. It's my favorite calendar app and their widget is just second to none. I like having the full month calendar on the left, my upcoming events on the right, and there's even a plus button here to add a new event quickly. Fantastical also has lots of options for medium size, large widgets, and the small squares. And if you just want like a month calendar or even the next two months, you can have it all right there in your widget. These next two I'm gonna put side by side, which is Things 3 and Reminders. Both of the widgets are great. They're both interactives. I can actually just check something off right here from the widget. It'll mark it as done in the app and then that'll sync. Now you can see that task is gone and they both function really well. Things and reminders, great home screen widgets to have. And I found this other app called Focus. Here you can set specific timers. Maybe you're trying to do the Pomodoro method. Start a timer right here on your home screen. It'll count down and you can have multiple presets, also schedules throughout the day and even pause it right here, right from the widget. Also, I like learning new words, so I put the Merriam-Webster dictionary widget right here. That's a fun one. Also, Timery, if you use Toggle to do time tracking, for some reason I couldn't get my login to work for this either, but Timery is one of the best apps if you have a Toggle account for time tracking, work, leisure, pretty much everything, and their widget is interactive, so you can start and stop timers right on the home screen. And lastly, for productivity, of course, you know I love shortcuts, and so you can put shortcuts right here on the home screen. I actually have a bunch of shortcuts to the left of my main home screen. This way they're always persistent throughout my different focus modes. And if you didn't notice, you can tap and hold on the dots here on the bottom and actually scrub to the home page you want to go to. All right, moving on to health and fitness, Streaks is one of the best habit tracking apps. Here you can have multiple goals, how often you want to do it, like writing in the journal for a specific day, and you just mark it done. And this way you know that activity you're trying to track was done that day. There's lots of pre-made streaks you can use or create your own how often you'd like to do it, adjust the color, all of that also affects the widget. Of course, if you use an Apple Watch, the built-in fitness app on the iPhone, which is still weird to me that it's activity on the Apple Watch, but the fitness app on the phone, their widget's pretty great. You could see your move minutes, your stand and exercise minutes. Still gotta do mine today. But if you'd like another way to see how many steps you've taken in a day, highly recommend Pedometer Plus Plus. It'll show you all the steps you've taken and there's a great Apple Watch widget as well. You can also see the step count in a small widget, larger, and different designs if you'd like. Also, if you're tracking your glucose, Glucomate looks like a great app and they have some really nicely designed widgets you can put right on your home screen. 
I haven't tried this personally. I don't have the data to be able to put in this kind of app, but we'd love to hear from you out there. Leave a comment below the video if this is an app you use, or if you use something else to track your glucose, or just if you have a favorite widget that I don't mention in this video. We'd love to hear about it. Finally, Smart Gym is another great app. It does require subscription for a lot of features, but you can create schedules, routines, and then have those routines right here in the widget, mark it as done, or just see the workouts you have scheduled for that day. Next category is Smart Home. Home Widget is a third-party app that's really powerful. You can create multiple widgets. You can choose individual devices, sensors, scenes, and even other actions like running a shortcut all put right there in the widget. For instance, I could put three scenes right here in the Home Widget. I can change the color of the background widget, gradient, text, all that kind of stuff. And now I can trigger those scenes right from this widget. But also with iOS 17, we did get built-in Home App widgets, and these are interactive. So I can actually tap on these, turn lights on or off right from the widget without actually having to open the home app. And one more smart home app, you actually can't put these widgets on a home screen. They only live in the today view. You can swipe over from the home screen and add widgets here and home cam is a great widget to have. You can get previews of all your cameras right here and then jump into the home cam app and see more details, all your cameras at a glance. And home cam is actually available for the Apple TV as well. If you wanna scroll through all your different home kit cameras on a big screen. All right, let's move on to food and water. One of my favorite apps, especially for grocery shopping, is AnyList. With AnyList, you can add widgets right here on your home screen with lists for a particular store. Or if you use it for meal planning, which we do, you can see what's for dinner tonight or just the next meal right here in a widget. Love AnyList. If you're trying to track your water intake, two great apps for that. This is Waterminder. You can actually add water right here from the widget. Interactive, I love how it just slides down. Choose one of these size waters you just consumed and it will add right there to your daily total. Another great water tracker app is Water Llama. I'm not sure why a llama. I guess they hold a lot of water, but the app is really nicely designed and I think the widgets look great too. You can add water right here from the widget. It's interactive, looks great. If you're tracking calories and what you eat, Calorie, C-A-L-O-R-Y is a great app for that. You can have some pre-programmed foods, things you might eat regularly, and you can add calories directly in the app and then have that running total right here on your home screen in a widget. Last app for food and water is Crouton, another great meal planning app. You can add recipes, ingredients, and then you can display the upcoming meals right here in the widget. Our last category, budgeting. I don't have a lot of data in here because I don't use a lot of these apps. You'll see budget flow requires a subscription to even use the widget at all. So that's that. You have Fin Budget. This was a nicely designed app. Again, I don't have a lot of my information in it. You can set budgeting goals, see your progress throughout a month right here in the widget. And a third app for budgeting is Copilot. This is a really popular app. I actually haven't used it myself. I typically use Rocket Money, but I discovered Rocket Money doesn't have a widget. So if you're looking for good widgets and a good budgeting app, check out Copilot, Budget Flow, or Fin Budget. And those are 42 different apps with great widgets for your iPhone. If I missed any, or if you have a favorite widget or app that I don't know about, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. Leave them there. Subscribe to the channel before you go. Hit that like button. And if you're looking for 27 settings that really make a difference on your iPhone, including better battery life, I'll put that video right up here. And I have another video covering 24 little known apps that are actually great. I'll put that video right up here as well. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.